Well, you will notice there's a lot of stuff missing off of here again. I took a bunch of stuff back off. Because I'm working on the time train. The time wasn't working and we had the chimes left to go. So, there's not much point in getting everything working if your clock will stay running, right? This clock was running before I took it apart. This does work. <clears throat> And then it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just about to stop. You'll notice the gears on the escapement are not turning anymore. <clears throat> so I took off the strike side, the chime side thing, so that I could get focus on getting this working, and then I'll get that put back together. Um, also, since I had hand-turned and tried so many times on these mechanisms, this tube had slowly gotten pushed in. And my minute hand, when it turned, wasn't turning my little hurricane symbol at all. It had gotten pushed too close to the case. So make sure you have a little gap in there under your hurricane wheel. Can you see that? A little gap, a little bit of room. The other end of this, t this pipe is... Let me get a different pointer. <clears throat> so the other end of your minute to is this gear that's got the spring on the bottom of it. There's a shoulder on it when you when you seat it into that hole. You should have some in shake. The shoulder should go in and out a little bit. Just the pinion should be in the hole. When it's bottomed out and that's in all the way, you make sure you have a little gap underneath there. <clears throat> because basically, had the clock all put back together, was working on getting the timing right, and I had the same problem as before I ever even started because this had gotten pushed down. The little tab that was getting lifted was now going over it, wasn't hitting it, and nothing was happening. So. I took everything back off and I said, well, let's start with the time. So I left these gears on. I just took the springs off so I would have access to try to see what was going on. I have taken this out and I've tested it. When you set it down and you spin it three quarters of the way around, <clears throat> if you put it in a clamp and it's somewhat level, this is the benefit of this is that it doesn't have to be level like a, anything with a pendulum. Um, it can be a little bit off level, but if you put it in a, in a clamp and you turn it 75% of the way around and let go, it should go back and forth for like three minutes. This one was going back and forth for about a minute and a half. So I cleaned it in some denatured alcohol and put it back together. And I know that it is working good, but there's something about this little brass piece right here that's get, getting some resistance and slowing things down. So the only way I can keep it working is to act like there's no spring on it. For me to be the spring, give it some extra pressure. And then it'll keep running. So it doesn't make sense because the spring is wound. Don't forget to check that when you're testing it. Make sure you wound your spring back up or it's not going to do much. It should be like that. It should be brisk. It should be snapping against the sides. You should hear it tick tock, tick tock pretty loudly. <clears throat> a 
because even that's kind of weak. If you see the center point, it's going maybe halfway at the most. It should be doing pretty much a full turn. And it, and it does when it's not on this. So this is giving it some resistance. So <clears throat> we're going to take these two pieces out. We're going to look at them and talk about them. Okay, keeping you updated as I go along. I loosened these two. Tried to slip out these, these pieces up here that I wanted to double check. I wanted to double check my escapement teeth. <clears throat> and this little, the little pallets on the piece that wiggles back and forth in this. Um, so I loosened those two and they wouldn't come out. So I loosened these two and the spring started undoing like crazy. So I had this too tight. That was part of the problem. This is too tight for this to turn. I felt like it was losing power and it wasn't going. And as soon as I loosened it a little bit, the spring went crazy and turned all my gears really fast. But the other thing it showed me was my minute tube is really bent. It was spinning and it was going like this. So I got a couple things to work on. I'm going to take out the two pieces up here that I was talking about and straighten my minute tube. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this piece up top. Okay, I've taken out my floating balance type of verge is what Perrin calls it. Um, I have downloaded a diagram. They say these are the these are the pallet pins. That's what goes on your escapement, makes it move. So this piece is up in your balance wheel between here, <clears throat> like so. This needs to be straight up and down. These need to be straight across. This needs to be straight up and down. It's very easy for it to get bent when you're taking this in and out. It gets caught on little pieces. So if you're having trouble, make sure, that's why I took this back out, was to look at it and make sure. And the first thing I did, I looked at it that way and I went, huh, it's way bent. But if you look at it like the diagram is on the paper, it's It's like so on the paper and it's straight up and down on the T with the teeth angled. So that's correct. I didn't bend it as much as I thought I did. When I first looked at it and I saw it like this, I thought it's way bent, but it is not because it sits in the movement like so because it goes around the escapement wheel. So. I'm just going to make sure all of those surfaces are parallel and perpendicular that they're supposed to be. And then my escapement wheel I haven't gotten out yet. But I'm going to just take a little extra polish to that. I put a little mark. There's a little Sharpie mark on there that's hard to see <clears throat> because I felt like it kept stopping at the same place. So that's a spot that I want to double check of that I don't have a little nick or burr or something holding this up. So I'm just going to spend a little extra time on these two parts and put it back together and not tighten the bottom quite as tight as I had it. And <clears throat> we'll go from there. We'll, we, we're going to talk about end shake and why nothing was turning and I felt like I had no power from my spring. As I'm putting this back together, I want to show you how crooked this minute wheel, minute pinion is. So 
So we'll be straightening that and putting the pieces back together. It has been a long day. I think I have got the bend out of everything and it back together. I said we would talk about in shake. Every piece that you put in there when you're installing it, you can see whether or not it's in the pivot holes because you can shake it up and down. It should go up and down. Every one of them. They should have play back and forth between the front and the back of the movement. They should not have play in the holes to go side to side. They should be able to go up and down. So every one of these now has in play. And this one did not, when I started, when I first put it together, and I knew that, but I felt like it had, it's like I said, something to do with this spring on this second wheel here. So if you... If you try them now, strike side, either way you turn it is nice and loose. Time side, turns. I could not turn it with my finger before. So that's a clue that you have a bent pivot. If these are not freely spinning either direction without your springs in. So they're all turning. So my next test will be just putting this back in and seeing what I can get with the spring. I'm going to test just the time for a little bit before I worry about putting anything else back on. We'll go from there. When you install these two screws that hold this floating balance, you do not want to crank on it really tight. You just barely want to snug it out and take the play out of it. Second screw in and give it a test. Yo. It's already trying to go. That's a good sign. Try not to break it with your screwdriver after you've done all this hard work. A lot of people about now, because I've taken the thing apart probably twice now that wasn't on video to try to fix things, a lot of people would be saying, Hey, how much is just to put a new movement in? Everything will be working fine. It's about $300. It's really more than I want to invest in this clock. So, looks like I might have gotten the bind out of it by straightening that. I don't even have this. I don't even have the, um... <laughs> I haven't even put this piece in yet. So this is a really good sign. Yay! All right, let me put this in and we'll let it work for a little while. All right, put that back in. We're going to give it a wind. I like my fancy holder. <laughs> Found that in the closet. Old masking tape, two inches long. It's perfect. It's got a little give to it. It doesn't slide around like the PVC is hard and slick. All right, my key. pretty odd. It's unwinding for some reason.
run like crazy the escapement, which is what I would have expected before, and why I said I felt like I had a loss of power. Now I feel like I have too much power. Okay. <laughs> okay, always something. We'll figure out why it's spinning like crazy now. Hmm. So I took my letdown key and I took all the pressure off the spring because it was not going to stop trying to unwind. And this is what I discovered. Be prompt in doing that if this happens to you because I now have no pins. No pins on my palette. They're gone. On. So I'll be opening this again and replacing a couple of pins.